Um, the other thing is, I just was trying to get my email, because there was an email in there from Mark Gerald about um, the delay on the lawsuit. But somehow, when you press the, something else comes <coughs> up instead of his, uh, uh, whatever he wanted to say. So I just, uh, I think that we're being fair to mention this. I think it's right on the top, the email. Well, it doesn't come on the on the. On the oh screen. yeah, yeah. I'm just, I think it was going to be a non-public. Well, I think that some this needs to be mentioned to the public okay. because it's uh, on the thirty-first, and that's two days from now. And I think if we know that it's not going to be filed for a certain reason, we should be doing something about it rather than letting Mr. Uh, Jones think that he's stopping it. Okay. I agree with Rick. <laughs> so. Mr. Bean. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I think we need to talk about it. Yeah, if we... If we all know that it's not going to happen until the 14th, and... Okay, could, could we do one thing? Could we stay in the wa wastewater, and then we'll move on? Okay. Go ahead. It's fine with me, but I also want to talk about uh, the uh, uh, the lawsuit. Okay, hang on one second. And I want to talk about the lawsuit. Yes, I know. I'm not cutting you off. Ready? Did you have, did you have anything to say about that? Yes. Um, uh, I mean, Rick, do you want to speak first? Do you want to allow? Well, I, one thing I want to say is I want to, I, I, this needs to be mentioned before we go into deliberative session. People are asking questions all, about it all the time, and um, I don't think that people really understand it. One thing I want to mention, and I thought of it this week, and I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but I can't quite remember the complete way it was. But and Fred might know, um, we met with uh, Chris Sununu when he was governor's consul. I met, I believe, twice with him at the galley hatch at 7 o'clock in the morning with John Nyan and another selectman. Another day we met with, um, it could be one time, but I think it was twice, and it discussed about the 10-year plan and all of that. So John Nyan's been involved with the 10-year plan for a long time. Um, and um, another time it was with Phil Bryce. And I know Ben Moore was one of the selectmen at least once, maybe twice. Um, and Phil at just happened to be at Kay's Cafe one of the days. So he was a witness to that. Um, but I can't remember for which one. But um, I think that we need to announce that there is going to be a delay because of, it's just not quite ready yet because of the um, uh, deliberative session. But um, I think that uh, you know this <laughs> illustrates you know that he's just continues to talk with John Nyan when John Nyan isn't even. Uh, you know, he's a, 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 a private citizen now. And why isn't he coming here? And now he has, I think we should give him an invitation to come here and talk to us about it before February 14th when we plan to file this suit. If he wants to talk, he needs to talk to these people, not play to the business people at the beach, where they're the ones that were all invited to show up, not the Board of Selectmen. And I think that we should send a letter to him inviting him to come here. Maybe he can give up dinner again. Or like in the case when I gave up breakfast to meet at the galley hatch two or three times with people so that they could help us with the 10-year plan, which my section of it's been taken out uh, mm -hmm. where I live, where there's severe problems. And I, I just think this has gone on for a long time. I, I don't see we're getting anywhere when every time this is voted on, it's 23 to 1, 22 to 1, 21 to 2, or whatever. I just don't see a, by a little chit-chat that he's going to do where he's had all these years to do it. He had probably more power when he was an executive consular. Why isn't he coming here to talk to us? Where we represent the citizens of Hampton not just the business people. Rusty? And I want to point out it was a four to one vote. Uh, which vote? 
to when sue? When we voted, yes, to instruct yes. this okay. to happen. Okay, then I, and then I want to point out that I would go along with what Mr. Jones said, that I would, that I would if the lawsuit's being brought Well, I don't off, think Mr. Jones wait, may I, knows. May I, may I speak? Yeah. I let you speak. Let me speak. All I'm saying is that he made a suggestion, and I would go along with his suggestion that we invite to have a meeting. That's what I would say. A, That's a my feeling. Apply. Well, I don't think Mr. Jones understands anything. I always feel that about Mr. Jones anyway. But the thing is, I don't think he knows what's gone on for, for years. Right. right. That's, this, this, I'm we've not been involved I, with this. Yeah, no, I'm and not I'd saying. like to see something happen instead of nothing. Yes, I agree 100%. And there's people up and down Ocean Boulevard that are very upset. Yes, I agree 100% with what you're saying. Especially when they pay their taxes to the town of Hampton. Yes, I agree. Mr. Bean. Okay, uh, can I bat up after yeah. uh, selecting yes, Brian's place? Thank you, you sir. Okay. Yeah. I just have a question. I just want to make a statement. I think Rick has a great idea, but unfortunately, I don't see that it's going to actually happen. No, of course it isn't. Right. You know, I mean, we've been trying to have this idea for how long? He'd rather play up to the people at the beach. Right. The and business people. All as I know is the people I talk to, they want this. Yeah. The people, the people that we sit at this table for, yes. they want it. They see what's happened, what's been happening. And we voted on this as a board, four to one, to do this. And we need a little more time, and that's fine. These things happen. But other than that, I have nothing more to add. If I could, Mr. Yep. Chairman, and uh, I, I understand your position uh, that, that you voted against that. And, and as such, uh, any reconsideration would have to come from the four that voted for it. And I would just say things got a little heated last week, and uh, um, it went up after the, our meeting last week. It was in the Union Leader and Beans Beach, and on and on and on and on. And, and uh, um, we're going to move up, we're going to move past that. And uh, there were some opportunities to um, share some ideas, and, and it didn't work out as well. And that's the way democracy works sometimes. And uh, we're going to move forward. Uh, there, there is some delay that, that Mark has experienced. Not delay, but the, the, this is so important um, that he needs a little extra time. And he's going to explain that, as Rick rightfully does. But um, I was uh, um, uh, part of an interesting uh, phenomena a couple of weeks ago or last week, whenever it was. And uh, that's fine. We, we all move past, and uh, we don't hold grudges. And uh, I want to hear what Mark says. And then I understand there's, a, there's been a pushback that's unrelated to anybody's desire to push this back. Um, I don't want to speak for the town attorney, but that's what I've been told. And uh, I'm, I'm, after Mr. Bridal speaks and you speak, um, I'm interested in what Mark is going to tell us about when this tort's going to be filed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, first of all, I, where did the January 31st date come from? This board. It's nowhere in our minutes. Actually, it was in your minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It came from this board, Rusty, to answer your the question. The board asked for a date. That was the date. But it was that, nothing that, we voted on. No, no. It, was just, it just came through right. the board. It's a consensus. That's right. Exactly. It came through the board. And uh, I, personally, I want to make sure if, if we are going down this road that we have it right. So if the, if the county, if the town attorney needs more time to do that then, and he needs more time to investigate it, then that's the way it should be. He needs to do it right. I agree. I think that summarizes it. But summarize it. You know, my, you know, my position. I, my position would be to try and have a meeting. That would be my position. Well, I, stick, I would like to have a meeting. I also. stick with that position to, it's not to send happen out now. Okay. It won't happen. It won't if we don't, happen. If we, it won't happen if we don't ask. I, yeah. Have we asked right. so many times? Do you know? We've been asking for 14 years. I've been here. It's never happened. They have never come here. Well, let's take a, a vote of the board whether we should ask for a meeting or not. For the umpteenth time, I'll make the motion. All right, I'll second it. All in favor? Three up against? Two. So we will ask the town manager to ask for a meeting. We'll do that, sir. To discuss the lawsuit. Uh, we didn't have any discussion on that. Well, we're not going to discuss the lawsuit. No, no, no. no. Well, we, we, had the, the, we, we had, we had, that, we, we had that vote. We didn't have any discussion, and I'd like, I'd like to have. Oh, not, okay. Not so. I would like to hear the town attorney. A l last meeting that was scheduled, and, and 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 I'm over it. I'm sure the governor's over. It. We all have. I'm we all. all have, I'm all ready. I'm all for mediation of some type. Can can all and, for it. Can it I, I, the yeah, I, I would just say this is that uh, we, we had a meeting and uh, it turned into the Barney Fife show. There was no agenda. Um, it, it, it was chaos. And uh, for the governor to come down here, 
um, without an agenda to speak about something that's a tort. Um, the governor has no power in Concord. He can't print money. Any expenditure over $5,000, the governor's council has to approve. He can't make laws. He can't write laws. He has to come and call legislators like you used to be, like he called me before um, this meeting and wanted to know my positions on various laws. Um, but he, he has no power, and he can come here and talk all night long, and he can't do anything. And uh, after that hit parade, and I'm being very polite about it, uh, that well is poisoned, my friends. And if you don't think so, go read the Beans Beach article that Grant Bossy, who was a long-term employee of the Sununu family, wrote and, and disparaged me and uh, used quotes of um, that I was a fool and that I was thin-skinned and that it was fake news and that this, again, is a long-term employee of the Sununu family. And if you think you're going to have a discussion with that, you're wrong. And then he said that there's three selectmen uh, that were pushing for this meeting. Rusty, I guess you don't count because you weren't mentioned Four in the one. You weren't meant, but but in in the in the articles, and it was fake news. There was no mention of Mr. Bridal's vote on the position. It was Mrs. Barnes, it was Mr. Bean, it was Mr. Griffin, and uh, again, um, that well's been poisoned. It was on WMUR. It's online. Um, USA it, Today. It's and and if you think the governor's going to come down here, the powerless governor, and that governor's position in this state constitution was made this way. Okay. It's a powerless position, and he can come down and have meetings. His first meeting at Hampton Beach that I never attended, I, I read in the paper uh, online today, oh, Phil's a great guy. That's in, that's in the Hampton Union. And there was no agenda to that meeting. It was one of his cheerleading expeditions. And then he comes down the next one, and um, um, I forget what it was. But that's okay. But if you think you're going to invite the governor to sit in this seat, uh, and answer questions directly about what he's going to do outside of his powers that are constitutionally mandated in this state. Uh, it's an exercise in futility. And uh, somebody please tell me um, uh, exactly how it's going to be improved over the last meeting. Somebody please tell me what the agenda is going to be, uh, who's going to attend. It'll turn into another circus. And I will tell you the, uh, the effort the town has gone on for all of these years uh, to produce this data uh, this is the town people's money. This isn't the Board of Selectmen's money. <clears throat> this isn't um, Governor Sununu's money. This isn't uh, um, the Budget Committee's money. This is taxpayer money. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some legislation up there with uh, Rennie Cushing's bill coming back for 15% of uh, pension contributions. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the well that shut down well number six. You know, maybe maybe if Governor Sununu wants to come down and actually speak to people that provide two hundred million dollars to his revenue camp, two hundred million dollars, and gets free police service, and free fire service, and you see we've we've got to come up with this new uh, um, thirteen million dollar expenditure that is state facilities that provide his nine percent, that provide his state parks uh, sewer system, that provide the refuse station. If the governor wants to come down and expand that debate, great. Because I'd like to speak to him sitting here without without uh, a chorus and without uh, the entourage. And I'd also like to ask him, what's he doing about well number six? What's he doing about Coakley? He's remained on the fence on that, silent. He's AWOL on that. He hasn't showed up. I'm horrible because I go to a meeting up here in, in Portsmouth to defend this town's interest. And uh, I get it. Both barrels. And... Uh, What's, where, what's he done on Coakley? You, know, you want to have the governor down here? Let's talk some real meat on the bones. Mr. Governor, what are you doing about Coakley? We've got a $6 million, six million gallon well shut down. We almost didn't make uh, our production needs last summer. What are you going to do, Mr. Governor, if uh, we shut down the beach because the toilets can't be flushed, Mr. Excellency? Let's have, if you want to have a meeting on that, let's talk about those salients. And what are you doing to protect our children, two of which uh, up the road, are now dead. And why don't we get any MBTE money? And where are all these great architects of the interest of Hampton, like Mr. Nyan, putting forth these comments? I don't hear them. I don't hear them from the people who work behind the scenes. I don't hear these. They're silent. It's just like, no, we got to get along. You just heard how many Mesmer get sabotaged in legislative agendas up there. And I've had it happen. And Mr. Waddell, you and I worked on pollution control exemptions, and they come out of nowhere. They do a placeholder there and give you the courtesy of a heads up. And that's the way Concord runs. You can have the governor come down here. 
But if he's going to come down and sit here, he's going to answer some of my questions, some of the townspeople's questions. And uh, that will be on the agenda. What are you doing about these dead children? And what are you doing about our cancer in our water? And what are you doing about uh, that situation in Portsmouth where um, a rogue unit has suddenly co-opted the Constitution and uh, they don't account to anybody. And they hire lobbyists that are all hanging around the flagpole like they all do. And we have problems. So if you want to have a meeting um, and he agrees to it, send him a copy of this tape and this video, um, and what I want on the agenda. And he can sit right in that seat, just like I sit in that seat, and we all sit in this seat and we take it. Um, and uh, it's not going to work. It's a powerless position. And I will be up there listening to his State of the Union, or State of the State, um, this, this next couple of weeks. But I think I've got a better picture on the State of the State based on the governor's performance last week in Hampton than he does. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Can I just say something, yeah. Rick? My suggestion was to negotiate with the state. It was not necessary to have the, the governor here. My suggestion was to come up with an agenda and negotiate with the state. I'll just make that point so that's very clear on the very specific issue of the beach. Go I ahead. voted to send a letter to invite the governor here. That's what I thought I voted. For. Okay, well then let's let's ch yeah, let's let, change I, it. All right, I, I will. Be, I mean, I'm okay, worried. Okay, I will be very clear with what I'm yeah. doing. Then we can we can vote. All right, I make a motion that we try to negotiate with the state over this issue before going to court. That's that's you my cannot, motion. You cannot make I'm a, a point that. of order. You you voted against this. You cannot. Yeah, you can. and, and I, cannot, and I you cannot, cannot. You cannot. All right. I'm if not, you vote against this, you make can. a motion. And come. You I can't. just said I'm not going to. I, okay, I'm sorry, but, Mr. but the the only thing I will say is we don't operate under Robert's rules, Mr. Ch Town Manager. Correct? That is correct, sir. You've never adopted Robert's. But rules. I will accept that Robert's rules have that, and I will accept what you just said. But, but, but I can make that. You can make. A I motion. can make that, and I think w while we have this opportunity, while the uh, the town attorney is still trying to get all his ducks in a row. That if we can get the, if we can get them to come down, and talk about the problems that we've discussed. Who? Who? Either the. I want to see the. the I'd, rather, I'd rather see governor's council he first came of all. down here. But I'd rather see governor's council. But if if it's the governor that comes down, fine. And we're going to talk about the problems that we've had at the beach and what he has brought up specifically yeah. about the money stuff. Okay, and let me say one thing. Wait, now, he, he made a motion. Do we have a second? We, no, we're not going to discuss it. Do we have a second if we're going under Robert's rules? Well, it's going to be ruled out because I'm not voting. Okay, well, I'm just saying if we don't have a second. I like his idea, but I'd like to have a discussion well, first. Well, then we have to have a second. So I have a second for discussion. I'll have a second for discussion. Okay, let's open it <laughs> for discussion. The thing is, uh, the, what has happened over and over and over again, and everybody here knows it, and if you don't, you haven't been paying attention is they have never allowed anyone to come because they won't have two of their people come and sit here because they cannot make any decision and they don't want to be abused. But yet they can abo abuse the Board of Selectmen. And that is what is disgusting about this problem. And that's and, why I said, well, if well they have them down here. Well, they us all, but they will not have their people. So, yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll go to have the people come here. But guess what? They won't. Well, then that's that's up to them. At least, and he I made would rather see the governor come. That's he only, fine. He could just miss dinner. We can even have the meeting start a little later till he's finished with dessert. That's fine. so. You made a motion. Yep. You seconded it. We had a lot of discussion. Does anybody want to continue the discussion? Oh yeah, we're going to continue this discussion. I, I, think, okay. I would like to say something. No, I just lost my train of thought. But um, so we're going to invite the people that we're filing suit against to come here to not file the suit. No. No. Okay, because we're not going to talk about the suit, right, when the he is here. Because that has been town council's we're, advice uh, to all of us. We want right. to talk about the boulevard of broken dreams where people's lives are being ruined because nothing's being done. Chris Sununu has talked about this the whole time he was executive council. That's the thing that all these people don't know. This is not anything new. This has been talked about and talked about and talked about it, and I was a member of the Hampton Beach Air Commission, and then they just, at the last minute, take it out. Now they say they're putting $275,000 in, and blah, 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 and nothing's happening. <laughs> People are getting old and they're dying. Right, and I, I'm sick of, worrying, of, of being part of this. And I that's agree. why we have to move on. 
I agree. But if someone you, wants to come down, and it doesn't have to be a lawsuit as far as I'm concerned, it could be some type of mediation. But if no one ever comes to talk, there's nothing happening. Exactly. But they won't come anyway. And why, if he could come down there and grandstand down there, like his father, um, why can't he come here? Yeah, and I also wanted to add, too, about how he completely sabotaged Bean, who makes $3,100 a year being a selectman and a state rep. Plus mileage. Oh, plus mileage. And that's completely, to do that to an elected official who's doing this out of the goodness of his heart and for his town and for his state is completely wrong. And now he wants, now we're going to make nicey nice with him and invite him here to talk because we're going to file suit on the state in two weeks. I just, I agree with you, Rick. I would I think it would be awesome if he would come here. But if he does come here, it's going to be for the wrong reasons. Yeah, uh, and my, my, my point of discussion is um, the governor can talk to a judge. That's where this is at. That's where this board is voted. Governor, just like the people that we talked about last week that are down at um, the beach that were run over, and his A-team that authorized the design where women were almost killed, um, their liability carrier is going to be writing a check worth millions and millions of dollars. And uh, that's where we're at. And aside from all the, you know, the, the, that, that fiasco, there wasn't a meeting. Um, where the, the governor and all his experts, just like the people did um, from the contract that there, and just like the state agencies and just like the town had people um, uh, talk, you can speak to a judge. And they can, they, can, they can work for their money. And instead of coming out to sabotage uh, legislation from local people, these, uh, these people that don't want to give people the right to sue if they, they're, they're being, uh, they have pollution uh, challenges, state agency directors and heads come out against that they support this uh, CLG thing um, game on governor of the state of New Hampshire this board has voted mr. chairman and this wasn't something that was done over a couple of weeks I came into this board and started this process in 2012 you sat in my office and we talked about revenue with a bunch of other legislators 2012 this isn't something that was just willy-nilly brought up and uh, it's been six years. It's going on seven years. The town council has been doing his work. And then we're going to get stuffed um, because people that have no expertise in the tort arena. This board has none. I have a little. Our, our business is about that, but I'm not an attorney. And then exactly what expertise is this board going to provide to talk to a governor that has no authority to give us any money? Governor has no authority to make any attachment of the state funds for this town. He has no authority. He has no power. He has none. So why would we waste our time? Maybe he herds cats better than most people. Well he, did, well, he can't write a check, and that's what this is about. And we've talked about the fact that this amount of money that Mr. Welch and his staff have, have developed is the tune of about $10 million in bonded project. $10 million. And to me, if you're paying five grand, do the math. That's thousands of people that are paying their taxes. And if anybody on this board thinks that they can short taxpayers in this town their money and disenjoin them from the fruits of their labor because Governor Sununu says he's got to do something for us, um, you're, you're not living up to your, your responsibilities as a selectman. That's my opinion. And uh, we have no right. A fireman, the captain, I'll listen to you all day long about about fires. I'm running a small business, I get a little experience, you do whatever our professions are. But that's the expert right there. Seacoast Media Group has opined that it should be in front of a judge. This board has voted that it should be in front of a judge. And that out on the street, the people in this town, there's some people that disagree, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I'm the one that was blind, so I'm, I'm going to talk about this. The people that work behind the scenes, those people, you've heard what Rick has said about Mr. Nyan, they have no authority to, to advocate directly to the governor. I don't talk to the governor. He was formal lines of communication. He was formal lines of communication when I talk to people in this town. And if I happen to talk to the public works director, I make sure the chief executive, Mr. Welch, knows and the chairman knows. Knows exactly what it's about. That's open and it's honest. And so for the, for the, for the governor to come down here 
um, in a meeting uh, and talk to him uh, about things that he can't do, that he hasn't done, that he never will do, is a waste of time. And when you're out on the street, you know, and people come up and go, um, geez, you're walking away from uh, $10 million of bonding capacity because you want to talk to a politician. A politician. He doesn't make $100 a year. I do. You did. You did. He doesn't make $3,000 a year. I don't get chauffeured to Concord. He gets chauffeured. He's got a state trooper. <laughs> You're going to talk to him? Have fun. Maybe people here talk to him. You know, they got his number. I've heard that. I talked to the governor. Well, I know how he talked about me. And I have no faith in people that negotiate like that. Zero. No faith in their credibility. No faith in their ethics. No faith in their common decency. And that's out of Selectman Barnes's um, corner tonight. That, that uh, an official that's over there that town attorney thinks is important gets maligned. So if you guys can have your vote, you can talk about it all night long. There's a vote on behalf of the people in this town that's been a six-year process, and the board should feel very proud of it. And if you think you're going to negotiate with a politician that has no power to do anything and offer any remedy, um, it's, a, it's a sad mistake in, in, uh, in governance. And, uh, Rick, I'm gonna, sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not, sorry. I'm, I'm not done. So I, I just and, and, and if we're going to have a meeting with a governor, um, when he came down here last week, uh, no one ever produced an agenda. Uh, when 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 millions of dollars of payroll and benefits sits down at a meeting like was conducted at a state facility, um, any professional organization I've ever been involved with, there's an agenda. There's an agenda every single time we meet. There's an agenda on every planning board, every conservation meeting. Where, where is the agenda for that? And so who's going to have the agenda? And I will tell you, uh, if the governor's coming here, I wanted to include uh, information on Coakley and why he hasn't done anything. I want uh, an information basis on why Portsmouth received MBTE funds. Did you ever get a phone call, Mr. Welch, from Concord on an MBTE? No, sir. Did anybody on this? No, no. I'm, 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 did, people okay, you asked a question. Can I answer the question? He, he just said no. I, I talked to it. Russell Prescott, and he he called the uh, he called the town office. Russell Prescott is on, is an executive counselor, on because you sent an email asking about that. I immediately made a call. Okay, but but did Mr. Welch get a phone call? No, I didn't talk to him. No. Okay, okay. That's that was my question, Mr. Chairman. He may have talked to somebody else. But he didn't talk to me. Okay. I, I asked if the governor called because. You know, again, we've got a $6 million well shut down. Yeah. I know if I'm the governor, and this is Hampton, there's 200 million juice coming out of here, and that's Hampton Beach, the crown jewel. Right. I hear that there's a six, six million gallon well down. I'm not, I'm getting in my chauffeur driven state trooper limousine, and I'm coming down here. And I want to know what the heck's going on, and get Eversource on the phone, and get Aquarian on the phone, and get them in here right now. And this is a huge problem. Oh, and there's two children that, are, that have died. Governor's addition to the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission was to uh, nominate a, a, a politician, a person that ran for a, an office, and his, his behavior in, in, in his meeting was insane. The governor had to yank him. He, he terminated his own appointment from the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission while he was still talking. It was the most god-awful thing I've ever seen in my life in front of a mother that lost a child. These are the kinds of things I'll be happy to speak to the governor about. And I've been to the governor's office. I went up there, and I went up there after that dog and pony show down the beach. And I, his door was right here. He, he didn't call up and say, geez, Phil came up to the office. Geez, Phil notified us. You know, so um, you guys rock on and play your game. But I'm not backing down from the governor. I'm not backing down from the Sununu family. I'm from the Bean family. I'm from Hampton. There's millions of dollars at stake on this. And I'm not talking to a politician that's demonstrated that type of, of uh shall we say, incompetence, and I mean this, and I'm not going to be rushed about this, because my name is all over the papers in the capital city. My name is, Mr. Chairman, not yours, no one else is mine, that the Bean, the Bean family is a fool. And not, no one else has that in, in here, and I'm just simply a public servant. Nobody and, uh, said the Bean family was a fool. Well, well, I'm part of the Bean family, and, and, and please, don't please, don't in, please don't interrupt me. Please don't interrupt me. Just, Please don't interrupt I'm just me. A okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we're we're pretty tight knit at the Bean family, just like Hampton people That's are. That's good. You don't. You're done right. It's good. Now, please let me have the floor. Okay. So if this is coming down um, for next, uh, whenever you people schedule with this politician, um, it's going to be expanded. And uh, in terms of your your meeting, uh, as a as a representative, 
and as a selectman, I'm going to be asking the governor, if he sits right there in that chair like we do, and like under your leadership you do, Mr. Welch, and we, we, or Mr. Uh, Waddell, we're going, to have these, uh, we're going to have these questions, okay? Dead children, what are you doing about it? Six million gallon well down, what are you doing about it? What have you done about it? Where's our MBTE money? You know, do you think you owe the town an apology for that fiasco that you executed last week? So if you want to bring them down here, these are the kinds of questions I'm asking. Okay? And the, the suit's going on the 14th. And it's going on Valentine's Day. So inform the governor, people that are connected and run things behind the scenes. Tell them that's, that's the kind of questions I'm asking. And bring his press officer, and maybe he can call me some more names. Okay? But uh, that's what's going on. And I'm a duly elected official in the town of Hampton. I'm a Hampton selectman. I'm a Hampton state rep. I'm a New Hampshire native. Like I said, I've got more government service than the governor of New Hampshire. Okay. And uh, he can bring uh, Grant Bossy down, the guy that uh, does the fake news, his long-term long uh, family employee. Bring Grant down. The guy that called me on the phone and already had his op-ed article written and then uh, just checked the box. And I called Grant Bossy up, just like I went back up to the governor's office. And I asked Max about it, his paper, which I call it always fake news. But I called Grant on the phone. I said, Grant, you know, when you, when you called up and, and punched the ticket about just making the phone call, because you already had your editorial written, I said, uh, this was last week I called him. I said, you didn't tell me that uh, you've worked for the Sununu family for years and years and years, and you've been on their payroll. And you didn't tell me that your wife is in their employer as a staffer. And uh, I'll ask Mr. Sununu that. And it's funny, it, it, when I said that I would be discussing this on the Monday Night Selectman show, that that very next day when I go to Concord to have a discussion with the Speaker of the House about this challenge down here, and he said, go, go for it. I wanted to make sure there was no problems. Uh, I'm informed that um, Beans Beach uh, is in the Hampton Union, or, or the uh, Manchester Union, the center op-ed. Center op-ed from Grant Bossy, the longtime political let's put it politely, employee of the Sununu family that now, uh, unlike the Portsmouth Herald and the Hampton Union, um, engages in fake news. So I want that on the agenda when he comes down. And uh, I'm just getting started. And, and then why would he call me when there's dead children and we have our town attorney, and I'd like the town attorney to be here, um, to say, um, you know, Mr. Bean was over at uh, the uh, Portsmouth City Council. And uh, it's the front page news on the Portsmouth Herald. And it's one of the most, it's the most important issue facing our town. Why did you call him? I forget what he even called me. What did he, what did he call me? Are you, he's really not here? What, the governor? Yeah, when I wasn't he there. He was appalled, you weren't there. He's, yeah, my, appalling from some 44-year-old um, member of a political dynasty. Yeah, I'll ask him that country. question. So um, I, I can go on here for another hour on what, what I want to ask him, but... Um, if that's on the agenda, um, I will not be stifled. And uh, these are the kind of questions that he's going to get from me, the Bean family, um, to the Sununu family, and uh, is a duly elected public servant. And uh, I'll just walk across the street from my house. I won't get chauffeured by a, uh, a state trooper. And uh, I don't care if I miss dinner. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. I would just like to point out that when, uh, when the meetings I'm talking about, John Nyan was the chairman of the Hampton Area Commission, and that's why we were meeting. And John was doing his best to get something to happen. And no matter how hard John tried, really nothing's happened. And now John represents the, all the business people at the beach. But you know what? I'm a business person at the beach that has a business there for 45 years, working six days a week for the last three years and seven days a week for the previous 42 years and I can't use the front door of my business and I think it's disgusting. I agree 100%. Let me just ask one question. I don't know how John Nyan came into this conversation. I brought it up that we met with him before. Well, that was before, but he has nothing to, to do with want, this right now. I want uh, Citizen Jones to know that a lot more goes on okay. than what's in his little yes. world. Okay. Can we take a vote? What? What is the, what's the uh, thing? I want, if, if what this lawsuit is about is the money that we feel 
the state owes us. And that's what I want the governor to come down and talk about. The rest of the stuff, don't get me wrong, Phil, you, you're bringing up a lot of good points. But why have to bury it with all a bunch of, and I'll call them, for lack of better minutia. Why not? If, if we want him to come down here, if we think, if that's what he said he could do, why can't we do that? Well, you asked me the question, I'll answer it, because constitutionally he has no, no authority. So you don't need to go back to eighth grade to figure that out. He can come down here and say anything he wants. He has no authority to give us any money, period, zero. He has none. It's got to be approved by the council, or it's got to go through the legislature. Can't That's do it. That's the problem. Okay, so, so, so you're, asking, you're, you're, you're asking that. So what, what is the point of him coming down here? Well, give him a chance. Did you, did you want to mediate or just have the governor come down? If we if we're mediating about <coughs> our potential, what this suit is about, then yeah, if we can do that, that's fine. Tacking all this that's, other that's stuff a, on. That's a different motion. You call for a meeting. Now you're talking mediation. This thing is getting as undisciplined as the meeting where I was had my character maligned by the governor and his excellency. Yeah. So it's it's gonna it's uh, and I'll tell you, Mr. Chairman, we're on a good track. People have had their say. I have expressed legitimate concerns about this town. Um, do what you want, but it will be a fiasco if he comes here, just like the other one was a fiasco. And you said it was ill-conceived. This will be even worse. No lawyer in the world would tell you to have a meeting with someone that you're going to be engaged in a tort. There will be discoverable issues. Mr. Gerald has sent out the email. Each and every one of you received it when you held your meeting, Mr. Chairman. Do not discuss the tort. I did not, uh, I did not hold any meeting. Well, you're the chairman of this board, and you agreed to the meeting. I, I didn't agree to it. I, so, somebody agreed no, to it, and you're the chairman. An chairman has power. That's, so that's a dead end a, 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 a chairman has the power to you, – you call a meeting, people go. Okay? I mean, I didn't call it. I somebody didn't call a it. meeting. Well, somebody agreed to it. You represent the town. I didn't agree. I, I went to a meeting. I'm not going to argue that. That's foolish. Yeah, you can't. So back, back to the point is um, – uh, I can't. I can argue it. I could. It's, well, you it's, just said you weren't going to. So now it's like you I said you're not going mean, to. And then you're going to make a snide comment. I would like to ask yes, go ahead. something. So um, when you are, does mediation, you can't. I know that when we deal with, um, like, for instance, the labor issues, um, when do we mediate? Before or after? Is a Well, what we're talking about here is a, a broad range of issues mm -hmm. that span not only funding, but questions of responsibility that the state has shirked for years, going back to 1933. And what happens when any lawsuit is filed in the Superior Court is that at a structuring conference that's held shortly after the case is filed, a mediation is at least brought up. Will there be a mediation? What form would the parties like to conduct it? So that will come up very early on. And I can say to you that um, most parties to litigation do engage in an attempt to mediate once they understand each other's positions. After the lawsuit's been filed. After the lawsuit's okay, been filed. Okay, then that's where I'm going to have to go because I'm all for that happening. I think that makes perfect sense. but. I don't see anything happening, and frankly, I'm sick. I'm, uh, so many people that are involved here are going to be dead before anything happens, yet they're not going to be dead fast enough to probably pay another five years of taxes and have nothing happen after they've paid the last taxes for the last 20 years and had nothing happen. I mean, you should look at the sidewalk in front of my house, and to think I have a business there, it's been patched over so many times. And I pay over $9,000 a year in taxes. It's ridiculous. Babies have to go out and go in the fast lane to get by the puddles. It's just ridiculous. I'm so sick of discussing with my people that come into my business. Don't, can't you do anything? Last week, three people came on last Tuesday after the selectmen's meeting, just walked in to my business and said, can't you do anything? I'm afraid we're going to lose our cars again. And I'm think and I said, listen, this is a state issue. I always tell him to call Mr. Welch, but that the the water in the road last week was eight inches, and Kevin Schultz was one of them that was trying to go across it. How much uh, also with the way the water builds up in the streets? How much does that cost the taxpayers for uh, the um, 
town equipment that like Kevin Schultz was driving or the fire trucks or the police ca cars. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I, I look at them go but speeding through. I'm thinking, oh my God, if that was my car, I'd never do that. But that's what the tax payers of Hampton are paying for. That's just one of thousands of things that we're not being. And I know that the reason why this is being delayed is because Mark is going through 85 years of abuse. Well said. Nice. So a vote? I guess there's no vote. Well, there was a motion in a, a second. There was in a second. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, if we have to do the mediation after it's filed, I'm all for mediating. So you want to rescind your second? Yes. Okay, fine. There's no vote.